Today is an excellent day to be an anime fan because the first three episodes of Vinland Saga have arrived. Now we do have a few week break as the fourth episode will be coming out at the end of the month just based on the whole we get the first three episodes now and have to wait a little bit later, but I'm okay with that because watching the first three episodes back to back, I think this was a better format than having to wait week by week for the first three episodes because this trilogy, it just works so perfectly together and kind of serves as the prologue to this wonderful story. Now, I sort of dabbled with the manga back in the day, not too much. I really didn't know much about this story except it had godly art, it had interesting themes, and a lot of people praised its characters and just overall battles. So of course I'm going to be excited, especially seeing Wit Studio, who really are great with action-oriented sequences as long as they have the time and just schedule to make something pop, and they absolutely did in this episode. Now there's very little action in this first three episodes here, but it didn't stop the fact of when the action was present, it was gorgeously animated. Now the first episode, it kicks off with a lot of 3D blending with 2D, and overall it really teases what Wit Studio wants to do for the battles and just the dynamics and how it's going to be more than just 2D objects clashing with each other. The way they were blending 3D camera work, it just was so beautiful to see just the speed and it really felt as if we were a soldier running through these ships, killing people left and right, and it felt like a real battle taking place. Something a lot of times anime scenes don't get right is when they have a group of large characters, you know, hundreds of characters killing each other. It's not just really one character slashing at each other for five minutes straight. It really will just be someone stab someone and they move on to the next person and the way that intro really played out it felt as if we were a character a seasoned warrior who was just going from person to person and the way the camera would follow him it was very awesome just to see how they were just really getting us into the atmosphere the only thing that was negative about the 3d is when they pulled away in the intro of episode one you could see a lot of 3d objects in the background fighting each other and that looked a little wonky, but where it counted, it was absolutely gorgeous. But the thing that made the first three episodes of Vinland Saga really pop for me, it wasn't even that it had great action or something like that. It's the setting and the characters. Vikings and just a new world order, you know, basically countries are conquering others and basically trying to get their lands situated and make rules and laws and things like that. It's a very interesting time period that really anime doesn't explore. Hell, a lot of fiction doesn't explore. Vikings are awesome, and people should do more Viking stories. But to see just how character-driven this story is, we really were focusing on a veteran soldier, someone named Thors, and just his son, Torfin, because I just love what this dynamic was, because we're in a time period where war, and pretty much everyone wants to be a soldier, you know? The entire idea, it's almost like this romantic fairy tale of, you get to be a soldier if you die on the battlefield. It's something that you would love to do, but once most kids get into battle, their opinion completely changes and they want to surrender or just run away, basically. And I love what the intro to this story did because we're seeing a man who just immediately seemed like he knew what he was doing. We saw him in the beginning of the episode. I actually thought the beginning of episode one was going to be how we would skip ahead or something like that, as if we were watching his life before his family got killed and then he got thrown into the battlefield, something like that. But in actuality, the intro was him abandoning the battlefield because he no longer wanted to fight and he had something that he valued more than just killing and that was his family. And I think it was pretty interesting watching the first three episodes play out because you're getting this scope of just... You feel as if everyone in this village, they want to fight or they just believe like running away is a bad thing. And one of our central characters, whether he lives throughout the story or not, remains to be seen. But as of right now, he's the head warrior, the head man in charge. And we're watching someone who basically did run away and doesn't see anything wrong with that. As if fighting isn't the answer and you shouldn't want to kill. You shouldn't have enemies that goes against human nature. And it was pretty interesting just seeing how he was almost kind of contrasting this entire world, it seemed like, where... It is driven by war, it is, you kill your enemies and you know, you party, you have women and it just felt like a very just brutal time period where one of our central characters was seemingly just, you know, he had the skills to do it, but just wanted to play blacksmith, he wanted to play family man, hell, in this episode, he frees a slave that was going to die, a slave runs away, and instead of giving him back, he gives him eight sheep for this man who was just going to die minutes later because he doesn't want people to suffer. It really gives you a sense of his character and just who he represents, and I thought he was a really respectable character, 
that I just feel like is just so interesting to follow over these three episodes. He kind of made this intro pop in the way that it did. You learn that he's essentially the captain, a man who is so respected that even 15 years later, when they locate him, the king, the leader is saying, bring this man back. There is no one better for battle than him and when it kind of got revealed that there was a hit on his life that basically that you know they were kind of playing nice but in reality that there's been a kind of hit for his head for like 15 years because he abandoned the battlefield i bought into that but as this story kind of unfolds you really see it's more of a personal grudge and that no they actually did want him that's why they bowed to him when they found him they could have easily killed him in his hometown it's just a personal grudge and the fact that one of these soldiers didn't believe in their strength enough that they could kill him, that he's so powerful that they could easily lose their entire squad, and how could he explain that to his master? That really shows you just how powerful he is, and the fact of the matter is he's held this grudge for so long. And I can kind of understand where he could be coming from if it's more of the direction of, hey, you know, I've been fighting for this guy all this time, and even 15 years later, you still want the old captain and not me. I could understand just, you know, you'd want to kill this man so maybe you could be the leader that people will respect. But it'll be interesting to see where they all want to go, because at the end of episode 3, when it looks like they get screwed over, oh shit, they're trapped in water, you know, they're clearly outnumbered, the only fighter is Tors, and... Nope, absolutely he can jump onto that boat and just knock everyone out. And I'll be interested to see if this man can convince his assassins that, hey, you probably want to work for me, not this guy who's paying you. The assassin was already starting to kind of question like, man, you don't even want to kill the person yourself because you're scared of him. I'll take the money, but man, you kind of are a coward. So that'll be interesting nonetheless to see where that story is going to go, but also where I clearly think our story is going to shift focus to, which will be his son, Torfin. And for introducing you to a child character, he's a lot better than what I'm typically used to. He's clearly naive, he's clearly going to jump onto the boat and go with his father and experience battle firsthand. But at the end of the day, I did like his character. He felt like he was a kid growing up in a time of war where he's kind of being sheltered away from war, but just believes that fighting is an honorable thing. And I think they really sold one of our future main characters exceptionally well. And just the overall theme and just atmosphere to this show is immediately different than pretty much everything you're going to watch. Not only just this year, but pretty much across anime in general. Because not only is it a beautiful landscape, you see ice, you see just grassy fields, it feels as if this is a massive world, but it's also a massive world being turned upside down by people conquering and taking it for themselves. And can you kind of find your own separate piece of land that will be avoided of just war and things like that and the answer is no war will always find its way to your shores one way or another and how do you kind of deal with that and in a time period such as this where it is vikings it is pillaging it is just horrible things and how do you deal with that especially for a man who is as skilled as tours and just how can you absolutely push back against that well you get roped back in overall i think this was definitely my favorite anime of the season so far we get the first three episodes so maybe it's a little unfair because most series have only had their first episode hell not every anime has aired their first episode yet but i can tell that this will probably be my anime of the season i know what i like i know what i'm really interested in for characters and the fact of the matter is these characters feel human there's so many simple comedy moments throughout this episode you know she has a daughter and how a lot of the people in this kind of area like her because you know she's probably one of the few who they could even potentially marry and i just like the overall dynamics with her because she's pretty much someone who's just like she recognizes what's going on but just like hey can you just go find someone else i'm just too tired for this there's a lot of simple moments throughout this episode that just felt like genuine comedy that didn't feel artificial or anime design like hey we're gonna give you an anime over the top reaction and that's supposed to make you laugh. No, it's just the general banter that was naturally funny and it didn't take away from the serious atmosphere. This is something that naturally feels like real world, but in a time period we don't get to experience. So it doesn't feel as boring as real world as we wake up and go about our day-to-day -day lives. It feels as if something pulled from history and just how people would naturally act in this time period, both the people for war and completely against it. And I think in terms of really selling you not only on the world at hand, the politics and just the overall scope to these battles and how it's going to evolve i think they did an excellent job but the reason this episode was so exciting was that the characters were excellent across the board even the characters who were doing questionable things like buying slaves or just keeping slaves if you break the order some of these people will absolutely kill their men or even just wound their men very brutally no questions asked because the laws are to be obeyed it's interesting how you just immediately got a sense of personality and even if they were doing questionable things that you personally disagreed with you at least got a sense of their character and why they they believe in just what they're doing even if you can't remember their name or you didn't even get their name you immediately get a sense of identity for these characters which is incredibly important 
The presentation is great. I love all the character designs. A lot of times when you have something set more in the past, it feels as if a lot of anime just designs, they feel like almost like they're too modern in a way. They shipped up their clothing, of course, but it just feels like their face structures and body structures. It's like, man, you could probably just put them into high school and it wouldn't even feel any different. Here it feels as if, yeah, these are characters that are either farmers or just general villagers. They're seasoned warriors. It feels as if the designs across the board, they feel interesting. They feel distinct and not just a copy and paste from other anime, which I really appreciate because this is supposed to be Vikings. It's supposed to be a different feeling anime, and they absolutely got across with the presentation. And like I mentioned at the beginning of this review, the action, just the little glimpses we did get to see, especially with the 3D camera work, it is going to make these battles incredibly immersive. I have to say, the opening and endings, favorite songs of this season. I love the opening, especially near the end of the opening. Just that scream and just the aggression, it gets you hype. It starts off a little mellow and you're like, okay, I'm getting into this Viking story. And by the time the opening ends, you're immediately just ready to just sail the high seas and fight and kick some ass. And that's, it's just great. I love this show across the board. There is a couple of piano tracks throughout this episode in the more emotional driven scenes and they really got across. It didn't feel like just some random kind of created piano track to make you tear up or something like that. No, it felt like it was perfectly crafted and matched the atmosphere at hand. This was incredible, incredible intro and I'm so glad we got the first three episodes because you wouldn't want to really wait week by week. I can easily watch this show weekly, and I am going to do that for Onwards, but this felt like a really interesting prologue, just the intro to the story in the world, and you wanted to get to know these characters at a rapid succession, so I'm glad the deal was made to do it like this, because this was a great intro, and is going to hook pretty much everyone who watches Vinland Saga. It's a very popular manga, but for those like me who maybe avoided it for all this time, we're going to be hooked, no question asked. I thought this was incredible, easily my favorite just anime of the season at this point in time, and probably will be my favorite anime by the time summer wraps up, but let me know. Magritte's Anime Originals, what did you think of the first three episodes of Vinland Saga? Favorite moment, favorite character? Let me know. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy, and also hit that subscribe button if you have any new. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.